Hello everyone and welcome to Dynomics. In this video I'm going to be showing how we can add a petrophysical grid or any other type of grid for that matter to our dot map window. And then we're also going to show you how we can use uh, points to highlight things such as where we have data. Let's get started. So in our previous videos we created our dot map file and we had gone through and we added our shape files, which included our counties and our townships. And then we added some well headers as well as our uh, production bubble overlays. So now we want to add a petrophysical property. There are two ways that we can do this. The first way that we can do it is we can select property and we can actually select our CPI file. We select the property that we would like to use and we select the zone that we'd like to use it for. And then we click Add. And what what will happen is it'll pop up a jobs menu and it'll need to calculate this, uh, this set of grids on the fly using our normal initializing, running, and then finished process. There are both pluses and minuses to this. The obvious benefit is that it's tied to your CPI file. So when you update your CPI file, it's automatically reflected here in your dot map. The downside to this is that because it's tied to your dot CPI file, if you make a change in that CPI file, that change uh, is going to mean that you have to recalculate um, that property before you display it in the map. And that may not be what you want. Uh, it, it really depends on what it is that you're trying to accomplish. Do you want the most recent interpretation or do you want uh, a set of results and a set of maps that will always give you uh, the same answer as soon as you open it without having to worry about if small changes have been made? It's really up to you. Okay, and now we can see that our petrophysical maps have finished calculating here. And these maps uh, should be identical and reflect exactly what we have in our quick look maps in our petrophysics if we use the crop option. So we can see the same patterns here because they're generated using the same process. Now, we do have some additional options here, of course. Uh, we can choose whether or not to crop. And we can also adjust our contour intervals if we want to do that. The other way to display grids is to use a grid file that has been calculated outside of the CPI. Uh, to do this, we could use a flow to calculate the map. We did this in a one of our flows help videos, and I would encourage you to review that if you don't know how this is done. But in this process, we are essentially using our CPI file to generate a number of grids, and we're writing those grids out to a uh, to a file called welcomeprojects.grids. So if we'd like to use that within our .map file, it's quite easy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, turn off the one from our petrophysical interpretation. And I'm gonna add a new one here. Once again, I come to add a property. And now instead of selecting a CPI file, I'm going to select my welcome projects grids file. This grids file, it's a dynamics multi-grid, so it has around 40 different properties saved in here. So I'm going to choose my hydrocarbon pore volume summary. And I'm going to choose it for the Niobrara formation. Once again, I could select the color palette that I want to use. I could set my contours the way that I would like to use those as well. And I click add. You'll notice that this map was essentially available to us instantly. And that's because we're bringing in a grid file that has already been calculated as opposed to a file from the CPI where we need to calculate the properties to then generate the grid. So now that we've done this, uh, there are some questions that we may want to ask. For example, where do we have uh, controls here on the map? So if you had uh, points that you had generated, we could use those, we could display those points on the map. For example, I've brought in some points that represent where I have uh, log data that reflects this. So let's say I wanted to add this. What I could do is I could choose to add points. In this case, I'm going to choose the points scatter plot option. I'll choose these points, and then I'll choose the lat 
and longitude columns. I'll set that I would like to see these as diamonds. And for the color that I would like to see, let's say I want to see them in bright red. I now hit add. And I want to move those up to the top. And it looks like, oops, I accidentally selected the wrong column there. I selected uh, latitude instead of longitude. Now, these points reflect where I have data controls on my map. And in this case, I can see that I have a lot of control here in the central portion of the map and less control off to the edges. So it's important to know that. If I want to come in here and I want to make changes, well, that's easy to do. I can simply, for example, modify the colors that I'm using. And if I wanted to use uh, a different set of well headers, I could simply come in and modify this. So previously I'd selected only wells that were specified as Niobrara producers. Maybe I want to uh, relax that and instead of showing that, I want to show all wells. Once again, I can hit apply. All right, so uh, in this series of videos, we've shown you how to uh, create a dot map file, bring in shape files, well header data, production databases, bring in petrophysical grids, and display points on the map. If you have any questions about how to build up this type of map display, please feel free to reach out to us at support at Thank you.